Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy Tristan Barracks here, the digital storyteller, and I'm super excited to be with you once again for another episode of Cinecut, and we'll be continuing on our, I guess our series on the Rodecaster Pro and all the features that are packed in here. I just got it, did the unboxing video, and I'm super excited to go through all the features with you. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go, woo! Hey guys, I'm really excited about this video because I want to jump into all these amazing features the Rodecast Pro has. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about my setup. Uh, it's really, really simple. I have a Sennheiser G3 setup, which is right here. If you can see on my camera here, perfect uh, overhead camera. And I have it plugged into the second input setup. And then it's just a lapel mic wirelessly going to to uh, to another wireless pack uh, that's inside my my pockets here. So it's a really really simple setup. This is how it sounds. Um, this is exactly how the mic sounds. The Sennheiser mic sounds on me going through this particular device. I'm actually going to jump into the Audio Audio Technica uh, 2020, uh, and this mic is actually the mic I use for my podcasting, so you can hear the difference. So I'm going to actually mute my lapel mic. And now I should be, uh, you should be hearing the fullness and the richness of uh, this particular mic here. I'm going to pull it up a bit here. And this is what this mic sounds like. I'm going to make sure my monitoring is up so I can actually hear what I sound like. Um, my levels are really, really nice. And this is what a, I guess what you call a dynamic or a radio mic uh, sounds like. This is like a studio mic. It's only about I believe this was like 120 bucks uh, for this mic. So you can get really, really rich, rich sound um, with, with a mic like this. Or you can go with your standard sort of lapel mic and it'll still give you uh, that nice sound as well. It, it, it's obviously giving you a different sound because it's not, it's not actually getting the sound right from your, your mouth. It's getting sort of the vibrations of your body as well as whatever is, is kind of getting caught from the, the vocals of your mic, but that's how it sounds. So let's jump into this. I'm gonna switch mics one more time. So I'm on my, my nice, <laughs> sexy mic. So let's go over just some of the general uh, settings that I have right now. Now, for those of you that, that don't know the physicality of what all these buttons are, I'm going to go through this really, really quickly. Just so you know, obviously we have a record button, which is already set up there. It's pretty straightforward. We have one, two, three, four um, monitoring buttons. So volume buttons for your, your headphones, right? So you can have up to four headphone outputs uh, because you have four tracks to interview people or to have conversations with people so each person can monitor the volume sensitivity or levels of their headphones so that's pretty straightforward this is your actual monitoring um, volume button which allows you to actually control the volume of your speakers uh, so if you have monitors plugged into this or any sort of uh, speakers high-end speakers you can just pull that up and that'll control the volume that actually goes out um, we have our one, two, three, four uh, tracks, audio tracks, which is great. It's great to have all of those audio tracks available. The thing that's really cool is that if you notice, there's a there's a white line here uh, indicating that this is the primary track, and then we have uh, three other inputs that are that are separated. The reason why this is this is separated is because there's actually a feature uh, that we'll tackle a little bit later that allows for the main track to to uh, force all of the other uh, subtracks to duck if the main track is activated by by anybody's vocals so if i'm the host and i'm talking and there are um sound effects that are activated or somebody's talking trying to talk over me it actually will duck their volume and then or reduce their volume which is called ducking and then will raise my volume which is really really cool very very useful especially when you're you're, you're dealing with two or more um people speaking at one time in a podcast and in an interview situation i've i've had that several times so that's a really really exciting feature uh that i that i can't wait to use the next thing is we have this other section, which is kind of what I call the multimedia section. Now, the multimedia section has USB input, has a uh, uh, auxiliary port jack. Um, I believe they call it something else, but 
I'm just calling the aux jack. It just makes it a lot simpler to understand. So you can plug in like an iPod, iPad, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, or you can, you can plug in a media uh, device uh, or your computer via USB-C. Um, and then, and then we also have blue Bluetooth. So the Bluetooth connectivity is really, really simple, uh, to use. Um, all you have to do is actually just grab your phone, make sure your phone is, is a Bluetooth enabled. Uh, so my, my phone is enabled to Bluetooth right now. I can turn on the Bluetooth option here and then I'll just pair with my device and it's now paired and there we go. So if I call, if I want to call a friend or if I want to play a sound, I'm going to play some audio um, actually in this and I'll make sure that I can, I can actually monitor this. I'm going to play, I don't know, one of my favorite songs here. Um, I'll play that right there. So not only is the song playing, but the other thing that's really nice about it is I can fade it down. I can fade it up. I can also um, take this track and it's it's playing in my headphones. It's playing through the actual system and it's being recorded on a separate track, which is really, really, really useful. Um, love that about it. So I can pause that. I can go to something else. I can go to a phone call. I can make a phone call if I want to. Um, I can do a lot of different things. So now that we have that set up, right, we have our media set up, then we have the last area, which is which is our, our sound effects area, our sound effects library. Now, by default, there are some pre-loaded sound effects. Uh, so we have, we have some funky sound effects like that. <laughs> Laughter, applause, wah, wah, wah. But I've also added in some other sound effects. And, and if I want to uh, go to those sound effects, what I can do is I can go uh, to this little, um, I call it an iTunes, uh, iTunes logo, but it's, it's the sound logo. You tap on that and you'll see the first set of uh, sound effects that are already pre-made. So we have the harp is yellow, uh, scary is blue, right? Um, but but also you'll see a next arrow. That next arrow will allow you to go to the next group of of um, sound effects. Now these sound effects are the ones that I've created or I've downloaded and, and brought in. So I have my DJ fog air horn. You gotta have one of those, right? Uh, I have oh hell no. Got OMG. Got my family matters starting in there. You got to have some of those stuff in there. And then I also put in some that were actually my own, um, my my own voice. So check this out. Dope. Dope. People know me as a dope guy. They know me as the guy that, that always says dope, dope, dope for everything, right? So it, it dope. It actually works out pretty well. And then I also have what's this one here? What it do it? <laughs> I'm trying something different, you know, guys, I'm trying, I'm having fun, right? It's all about having fun and trying different things. So that's, that's sort of the setup here at the front end. And then we have a headphone jacket at the, at the, the, the front part or the front facing part, um, uh, of the device. And then at the back, you have your four headphone jacks as well as your, your four inputs. And then you have your two outputs, uh, for, for speakers, a USB C input, so those are sort of the physical areas. Um, one of the things that really cool that's really cool as well is if you want to, let's say for instance, um, identify a certain area uh, of your podcast or of your recording, you can tap on this little flag here, and that flag actually identifies like a chapter. It creates like a chapter or a marker, uh, so that when you're going back to edit, you can jump to specific areas. So that's actually really, really cool. Um, I just used it just to, to, to identify where, um, where I transitioned to another uh, part of this tutorial. So when I tap on sounds and I go back, I'm in the settings area. This is actually the settings menu. So there are, there are four different options. We have channels, we have podcasts, uh, we have sounds and we have hardware. So um, we're going to start out first with channels. So when we tap on channels, we have one, two, three, four uh, of our audio inputs and channels. And then we have our three multimedia channels, right? Which we spoke about before. When we tap on 
the um, track number one. We have four different options in there. So we'll tap on microphones. Microphones is actually the area that allows you to define what type of mic you're using. Um, so these are obviously specific products to to Rode. I'm actually using an Audio Technica dynamic mic. So I just tapped on dynamic and it's actually, the, the software is actually gonna react to that um, in terms of kind of kind of tweaking it a little bit. One of the things that, I, that I'm learning about this particular unit is that, you know, Rode really thought, spent a lot of time thinking about how to simplify the process for the end user. Most people don't want to have to go into the fine tuning and minutia. This is not that type of device. It's really about being able to streamline your work so that you can go record, upload, and repeat. If we go to levels, this actually allows us to control the, the gain levels. So at this point, I really, really like where my gain levels are. So I'm not going to change that. We can also control, control the phantom power from here. So this is really important. If you do have a, a, a mic that needs phantom power, like this particular mic, this Audio Technica 2020, uh, then then this is where you would go for that. And that's, that's really, really key. Voice is a really, really interesting area. So voice is 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 almost like a simplified version of of being able to kind of eq your eq your your voice or your mic right so traditionally when you when you eq your your voice what you're doing is you're kind of making it sound um the best it possibly can um based upon the, the tonality of your voice so i have uh, kind of a medium to bassy voice so you know what I would do is I would probably bring down the bass a little bit and bring up more of the brighter sides of my my voice just because naturally I'm already bassy right and in this under voice you have two different areas you have tone and you have strength tone is is the tone of your voice the richness of your voice so if you are again very bassy like I am or, or mid to low bass um, then you would want to go under tone and you would say your voice is deep. And when you tap on deep, it'll actually adjust the way your voice sounds and kind of maybe bring a little bit more brightness on the top end, right? If your voice is more high pitched, then you'd go to high. And then that would bring up the, 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 or bring down the, the high pitch part and bring up the richness of the bass and the body and give you your voice a little bit more body. If you feel like you're just medium then you, you, i guess it does nothing or or it tweaks it the way it needs to tweak it i'm gonna go with deep i'm gonna go back and then strength speaks to the the intentionality the the how strong you project your voice right so right now i'm not i'm not projecting my voice super super um high but or hard but I'm projecting it enough uh, for it to be, let's say, medium. I would leave it at medium, but let's say you know you're a strong projector, then it will it will dial back some of some of the EQing uh, so that it's not so forceful on the mic. Or if you're soft, then it'll pick it up, right? So I'm just gonna leave it at, at medium there, and and that's just you know Rhodes' way of simplifying something that would have been a daunting task for people that are not at all. Um, not at not at all audio technician the next thing we can look at is effects now effects is simply put you know the the way that you can really add that sort of polish to any of your your audio that you're going to record so if you want to have that sort of radio broadcast sound um that sound that you would hear on fm radio um the sound that you would hear on like a really really nice podcast well-produced podcast these effects will help you do that this is how compressor sounds for me um if you're if you're listening or if you if you want to hear what the compressor sounds like this is what the compressor sounds like and the compressor is pretty straightforward what it's trying to do is trying to kind of give that more um contained sound um that really studio um polished sound um you know compressing sort of the highs and the lows and trying to keep that keep that equilib equilibrium pretty consistent uh so that's what that sounds like um if i go to uh, high pass filter what a high pass filter is going to do is it's actually going to uh, take out the bassy part 
uh, of your of your voice um, or of the audio signal. And the reason for that is because sometimes you're in situations where there's like uh, a fan or there, you know, I'm in the basement. So like water comes down here, the fat, the furnace get, goes on, the water heater comes on and and the mics can pick up some of the bass in those in those activities. So if you do a high pass filter, essentially what that means is it lifts up the bassy parts of the actual audio and it leaves you with more of the mids to the high section, which which is frequencies that that sort of the, the normal ear can hear a little bit better. So that's how the high pass filter works. Um, the de-esser, the de-esser is basically taking away some of the S's off of my voice. So I have a lot of semblance and a lot of pisses and and in my voice. So that's taking it away. And that this is how it sounds. It sounds kind of weird. It's almost like, you know, it sounds like me talking, but then it sounds like somebody's like, like almost pinching my, all of my S's. So it's like, I'm saying something, but it's kind of coming off like this. So that's what DSing does there. Uh, noise gate. So the way the noise gate works from what I was reading, um, and, and it's really, really cool, is the noise gate is actually designed um, to reduce the mic levels when you're not speaking. So when you when you are speaking, it will raise up the mic level so that obviously the mic can hear you and the recording is great and crisp. But when you're not speaking, it will reduce the the, the levels of the mic down so that it's not picking up the audio of the room or any other unnecessary sounds. Because when you go into post, you now have to add a um, add some sort of noise reducer or or some sort of noise cleaning software to your audio in order to get rid of that that quiet noise. I can hear a lot more um, sound out of that. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, reverb, reverb. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? Reverb. Um, I don't really hear a lot of reverb. Maybe it's just me, but that's what reverb sounds sounds like. I guess it's supposed to give a little more beef there. Um, the Akiro Exciter um, is supposed to kind of make your voice sound a lot more energetic and effervescent. Um, I hear it right now, and it's just it just seems like you know the volume and the mids midsection of my voice is really like raised, so it sounds a lot more exciting. And the big bass is all about giving that nice little you know big. Uh, deep, beefy type of sound to your voice. It brings down the the bass part or the lows. So your voice is almost like, you know, Barry White. It gives you like, hey, baby, mercy, mercy me. <laughs> that sort of sound. So again, uh, that's what that does. Um, and then lastly is the processing. So the processing uh, button is just to identify and let you know that um, the effects are enabled. So that's something thing you know if you turn it all the way off then you can't actually put on the effects if you turn it on then it allows you to do that as well so when you're looking at these options remember that these options are are available for each and every one of these tracks here so whatever track you want to go on uh, you have these options whether it's two three or four they're all uh, color coordinated and they're available for you so now that we're back at the home area of the settings we already know that you know we already been through channels we've gone through what sounds do and, and what you can do with sounds now a lot of people may be asking well why is why is podcasts grayed out well it's because we're recording right now but this actually will show you the different recordings you have of the podcast that you're recording but we all know that you could just record anything right now i'm recording uh for my this this youtube video and tutorial and and just breaking going to be breaking that down as we go but this is this is the option that you go to to listen to any of your recordings let's tap on hardware and then on the hard hardware we have five different options we have um micro SD card, we have brightness, we have headphones, Bluetooth, and advanced. We've already talked a little bit about um, the micro SD, so I'm not going to jump into that again. Um, if we go to brightness, it just speaks to the brightness of the screen, um, active state, and then inactive st state, 
it'll it'll show us the different brightness levels for for that so that's pretty straightforward headphones uh so we have we can have a limited maximum volume so we can actually when we enable this so once we turn that on then what that does is it actually um limits the amount of of i guess volume that goes into our headphones so that you know if, if something loud all of a sudden starts playing it doesn't you know deafen us or, or or damage our hearing so that's that's one thing there uh, so i'll turn that off yes i will turn that off and then also we can boost headphone volume by tapping on this we'll press ok and now the the headphone volume is really i uh, <laughs> excited it's a little bit much for me so i'm going to turn that off and go back to the normal settings there. Um, Bluetooth, if we go under Bluetooth, it's the same sort of settings that we had before. You can pair and you can turn it on and off. I'm just gonna turn it off for now because we don't need the Bluetooth on right now. Um, and then let's go into advanced. So under advanced, we have a few different options. We have multi-track uh, audio, extras, information, and reset. So obviously reset is to reset the whole device back to default settings or factory settings. Uh, information, it gives you the information about the firmware um, um, as well as the date that's programmed into uh, this device. So for those of you that are, that are wondering, this is the 2.1 firmware update uh, for the Rodecaster Pro. It is a beta version, so the, they haven't f firmed up all of the, the new features that are built into it, but I want to right away upgrade to the newest features because there are a lot of great things in there that you've been seeing so far and i'm going to go even deeper into some of the 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 mechanics of some of the newer features that are in there so uh, let's jump into multi-track so multi-track allows us to record multiple tracks at the same time the reason why this is important and this is a feature is because when they first um came out with this particular device it was a one um, file mix. So imagine recording all four uh, tracks of audio, right? You have four guests, you want to be able to mix it later on in post or, or do different things with it. Maybe somebody, somebody's mic was too hot, other, another person's mic was too low, um, and, and you want to try and remix it after the fact. Well, initially, the initial firmware that was on this device uh, only allowed you to get one um, pre-mixed file so it was baked in all the audio tracks were baked in that must have been super frustrating for people because you're like well it's not really usable because I don't want a baked in track because I want to be able to control it maybe I just want to take out something that one person said as a promo uh, to promote you know a conversation I'm going to have later on on my podcast or to pr promote my podcast so there's a lot of different reasons for that they switched it up they they in in um subsequent firmware updates road listen to what people wanted and gave you uh, gave us all multi-tracking recording so so when you plug the roadcaster pro into your computer you can actually get multi-track recording you can actually also do things like bypass the audio processing so so this is really good if you know that you want to do your own sort of audio work or audio editing or or processing in you know um I don't know, like an Adobe Audition or uh, Logic Pro X or um, other, you know, um, other audio programs. This just gives you that that flexibility. So then you don't have to unwork or rework whatever this device uh, is creating on top of whatever you're trying to create. So that's something to to note as well. And then we also have post fading, which is always a great option. So you, you have some options there. Um, if we go under audio. Under the USB area options, we have um, enable mix minus, and this is just when you are um, adding in a feed, or let's say, for instance, somebody's calling in, or there's a there's there's audio that's coming from an input, a USB input. Um, you don't want that feed to then be rerouted back to that device and then it be sort of like a, a double echo type of latency lag. So when you tap on that or you enable that, so it actually allows the USB feed to come in, but then when the full mix and, and feed is coming out of the device, um, it's not going back to that device with the same feed that 
it actually inputted. It's kind of weird, but essentially you think of it like when people call in to a show um, and they're calling into a show and they're talking uh, to a, to the host, they shouldn't be hearing their self. They should only be hearing the sound of the show and the other panelists that are on the show. Now, you can correct me if I'm wrong in, in the comments, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Uh, let's go to monitors. So under monitors, we have um, automatically mute outputs. So if you wanted to just mute the outputs, maybe you're doing a recording and you don't want to hear the outputs right now, you can you can mute that. And you can also disable um, the level knob. So the levels knob is this, and you can actually disable it so that when you're turning it, it actually won't turn it up, which is great for certain situations. Channels. So under channels, we can we can enable uh, pre-fade, listen, and ducking. Uh, we already spoke about ducking before. Um, ducking only uh, really speaks to channel number one. Uh, if I'm speaking on channel number one, and then channel number two, three, and four are also speaking, it'll actually reduce the volume of channel number two, three, and four, and then allow my channel, channel one, to be um, upped in volume so that the the listener can hear me a little bit better and that is it those are all of the the options and all the settings that are in the the roadcaster pro um, i tried my best to explain everything as best as possible if if you have any questions if you have any comments please let me know below in the comment section if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up please consider um, following and sharing um, these videos that i'm creating as well as subscribing to my channel Channel and telling other people about it. If you really, really like what you're hearing, if you like the videos I'm creating, please let, let me know in the comments section. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Stay creative. Peace.